Give me a tour of the uh, well, it, artifacts. You know, well, we got a few artifacts. Uh, I'll start out with the old mill. That's the old mill is right down before you get to the bridge. Mm -hmm. That's a picture of it right there taken from the railroad track. Okay. And we got lots of views of it, a lot of pictures of it. These scales and these pulley wheels and these these are tubes is what they are, they're not beams. Mm -hmm. Got two or three of those. Okay. You know, there those for the flower and grain run through them to oh. different floors and scales and these and then Rick Wright Wagner's one here. Yeah, saying. I was talking to yeah. him before I came over. He yeah. said that those were his. Yep, sure were. <laughs> so he's uh Anyway, I want to give him make sure he gets credit for it. Yeah. Anyway, we've got all pictures, and uh, this, I'm still got a bird by, but this lock and key came out of a very old house with cigars on it. And we got all of our, our books here. Some of the meal that were made in cigars, this Shanks meal book, these cigars we can see. And we got the past and press books, and uh, Artifacts from Bellamy hardware and pictures. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, Whose banjo is that? Uh, yeah, I brought it up here. That we was going to put it on display because we got so much music in this town. We was going to make a. I don't think our museum is going to be like other people. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to put a living type thing, you know, that mm -hmm. not not from 200 years ago, but from in the last 50 years, people that have you know, color yeah. for us. That's a Frank Stroop insurance sign that was downtown back in the 40s, probably 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. on the police station. That's where it was at. Oh. That little building there. Okay. Right. And old uh, Caswell Art from down the East End is always a big place for cigar and mm. Mr. Caswell, local artist? Yes, he is. How long? I know this ain't much, but it's just well, it's scattered is... all over the place. Right. We got to put That's what I was going to ask you about. Now, you. You've got, you said you've got stuff in your hardware, Melanie hardware. Yes, I do. And what, some of this came out of there, but it's just stuff I could get my hands on. What are, easy. give me some examples of things that are scattered. What, what, what have you got? Uh, lots of pictures of the old town. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then a lot of them are actually on Facebook, been downloaded on there if anybody wants to go look. Mm -hmm. To go to the photos and cigars were past and present. Mm -hmm. And then the, a lot of, uh, Ledgers and deeds and stuff that Jack's been collecting for years. People have been unloading all this paperwork mm -hmm. on him. And right down there. What's that basket thing? That's a tobacco basket. Oh. Okay. And we got uh, we got all this tobacco stuff. Uh, the way people used to cut tobacco, all the implements, mm -hmm. and tools. What you got there? This is a collection of uh, razors and uh, razor strops from. Uh, my uncle bought some of them. Of course, his razor strop since he was a professional barber, it's not around. Uh -huh. But uh, this, this is, I think, from my grandfather. This particular, my uncle, my uncle was a barber. Oh, okay. And he, uh, uh, he's, these are all German, uh, straight edge. Oh. Well, we're hoping to preserve these items that are being collected by people, and maybe they're the only person in their family that are interested in that. Mm -hmm. And so they collect them all, and then on their demise, uh, maybe they're sent to some faraway location, mm -hmm. uh, or they are burned. Yeah. Uh, tonight's meeting is just to, to pull together those folks that are interested, or that are collectors, that are uh, maybe uh, have items that have, could be of interest mm -hmm. to get them informed that we're doing this and maybe uh, to help arrange and get something going. Okay. Here. People want a safe place before they know they'll yeah. give it up and know that it's going to be taken care of. Yeah. Right. You know, they've got it at home. We've been told by, I've got this and I've got that. But with nowhere to put it, they're not willing to to let go of let go it, of even, it or, you know, even on the lawn. What, do you, what needs to happen to, to, before you cut the ribbon on this place? Uh, you mean answer? <laughs> yeah, we need to answer. to do some work, basically where we're standing. Yeah, uh, do some concrete work, some insulation, heat pump, to, yeah. and and dehumidifiers to keep get this place dried out a little more work. Right. We need a wall built with, with a better door, better entrance, and. 
a few and thousand. Yeah, you need yeah. an actual sidewalk leading to Yes, we do. Yeah. Sidewalk. We, we need all that. Yeah. And, and, uh, the sons of Hawkins County that served in World War One. Oh. And both of my grandfathers are in this book. Huh. And there was only a few of them made, I understand. Just yeah, very, I've got a you know. soft back one. And uh, so, anyway, that things like this, I, I want it away from my house and put where people can actually enjoy it and see it, you know. All right. You can take this. These are uh, Wedge 9 uh, racers. They're so, German. So who, who was the, uh, who was the... The barber in your family? The barber in my family was uh, Houston Berry. Uh -huh. Now, he came along pretty late, you know, in the early 40s or late 40s after the war. Well, that's, that's he went to barber. A long time ago to me. <laughs> yeah. To me. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he died. He died cutting hair on July the 4th. Got to him. He was cutting a doctor's hair. Oh, I'm doctor. getting excited. Okay. And so this doctor, of course, uh, checked him out and knew he was dead. And so my aunt gets a call and says, you need to come to the barber shop immediately. Uh, Houston's uh, been taken ill. So she comes and there's a bunch of cars parked and she pulls up and she says, I'm looking for a parking place. She said, and the guy said, lady, said the man that ran that shop just fell over dead. Oh, no. You know, and she knew nothing about <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That's the hard way to find out about it. Yeah, it is. Of course, uh, see, now, the, those stories, you need to record those stories. And they need to be put on a. Well, well that's what yeah. we're doing. You that's need to what put, we're doing. To put that story on a and, on a little card and put it where that's displayed. Here's Absolutely. another one. Same same uh, same handle. That must be some kind of a yeah special. Where's that menu come from? Now that's oh, that's Neil Lee's in drive in. Drive in for restaurant or drive in drive in restaurant. Oh, okay. Uh, no, were those the prices that were on it when it closed? No, that, I had had to have that. <laughs> That's how much you wish it was now, right? Yeah, uh, that's that's uh, the old East stand there, and that's a, those are real people and real cars, and I remember them every one. Those cars. And oh, at the drive-in. Yeah, that was about depicted probably '64 or five right in there by Jim Caswell. Oh, okay. Please. I have up the car and bring it down here. Twenty-two hundred documents. Okay, that's loaned to me by a lady in Rogersville that grew up in Circle One Store. Uh -huh. I have six hundred of them copied or translated and whatever they tell the story of not only sir goinsville but this whole area oh and uh but she wants them back right now she's she's loaned me stuff like that on and off yeah See, all those documents i was telling you about are all in long hand mm -hmm. i mean a few of them are typed but the problem is uh i can read them regina can read them a lot of people can read them, but mm -hmm. they're torturous, you know. Yeah. So what you need is to put them in print where our Sign descendants and everybody translate them, translate them yeah. so that so that everybody can can learn about it. This is an old ledger from the Methodist Church. Yes, it is. Oh, it's October 1792. That was I, I 1892. 1891. <laughs> Jesse Jones and Marty Newberry. 1992. Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Okay. They had uh, low attendance that, that year. <laughs> yeah, like. they did. <laughs> Not a lot of entries. Well, uh, you know, uh, this is an old ledger from Johnson & Johnson store. Oh, is it? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not that old, it's 1955, but it's got all these names that we're familiar with. Yeah. We, we've got the, uh, you know, the copies of Yellow Store, which is quite old. There's, Here's some, uh, some legends. Bell Me Hardwire from, from the 30s. Uh, mm -hmm. 38, so Bell Me Hardware Company, Hardware Seeds, Farm Machinery and supplies, paints, furniture, funeral goods, yeah, they, coal, and groceries. They, hmm. they sold caskets. Yes. And we, that's William Richards. Those are William Richards. Bud Byington. We remember yeah. Bud Byington. Yes. He got killed with Ed Kowalski. He, he did. He yeah. did. I, I guess on he still owes that. I forget. 1935 and it is. Uh, Williams. 75 cents for nails. Yeah. He had his uh, his account was seven dollars and seventy seven cents. He put seventy five cents, almost ten percent back. I mean, eight fifty two. <laughs> hey Jeff, I have the uh, six of these big photos like this, are all mm -hmm. framed that I got uh, from the 
back warehouse and always go back when it closed and oh. abandoned it. We want our archives, I think, from what to be a little different. We don't want, we want it to be a living type thing, you know, uh, all the way to new history, not mm -hmm. just, no, we want to, you know, I'm just thinking it'd be good to feature people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two or three people a year that was prompted. It doesn't have to be. Like find out, I want to find out about them and then, and, and then make sure it's written down and recorded.